My name is Leonidas Vesperini, and uh, I'm the coordinator of Mythic Battles Pantheon. I was the uh, editor-in-chief of Ravage for many, many years, and uh, while I was still editor-in-chief, I was involved in Conan with my friend uh, Frédéric Henry. Uh, it was a fascinating uh, journey and uh, a tremendous success. Uh, after this success, I was very, very interested in uh, doing something new, in a new project, and that's how I, I got involved in Mythic Battles uh, Pantheon with another friend who's Benoit Vogt, the author of the first Mythic Battles uh, that was released in 2012. Uh, he, after Conan, he, he came to me and asked me, uh, would you be interested in doing the same thing uh, as uh, with Conan, but with Mythic Battles, and just uh, produce the game as it could have been uh, from the beginning, uh, with mi miniatures, and, and so that's how it all started. So I quit my position as editor-in-chief of Ravage, although I still own the magazine, uh, to completely uh, dedicate my life to uh, this new project, Mythic Battles Pantheon. I was in charge, indeed, of the uh, uh, artistic direction of Mythic Battles Pantheon. I, I got completely freedom on, on that. So what I did, I first uh, looked and, uh, at the very first game, because uh, there was a tone already there done by uh, Loïc Musy, the first uh, artist working on the project. He's still there on the second project, but we had so many th new things to do that we needed a lot, a lots of new artists. So uh, the first artist that I contacted was uh, Steph Kopinski, uh, because, because of my position with Ravage, I had been working with him before. He even had uh, drew some covers and his brother too, Carl. Uh, I really love uh, Steph Kopinski, and uh, when I contacted him, I, I gave him a, a very detailed uh, description of what the world was and what I wanted him to do, because this first uh, art would define the rest. And that's uh, how he came with a, a beautiful piece of art with Zeus. And, uh, and then uh, all the, the, the different artists who work on the project had to follow uh, a speci well, this, uh, this tone. So I would send them uh, the, the images and, uh, to make sure that all the, uh, the, the different artwork is, uh, 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 how would you say, uniformed. What I particularly like with Mythic Battles is it, that it mixes uh, some mechanics that I really enjoy myself. Uh, I've been editor-in-chief of Ravage, but also editor-in-chief of uh, card game magazines and Magic uh, in particular. And this game is a mix between the two. You have uh, the excitement of a miniatures game. You build your army. You uh, you draft your uh, your men. Uh, you you move. You use dice to attack. But it also uses. Uh, uh, the, the deck management uh, mechanism that you see in Magic, and the combos also. So it's a unique uh, blending between those two mechanics that I really, really like. We need to go on Kickstarter because with, uh, you, you wouldn't be able to produce a game with so many minis, so much material at a decent price. Uh, if we were to do the same kind of game but use the traditional network, the price would be just uh, enormous and uh, Kickstarter allows us to adapt to the success of the game and to, to be able to add some new uh, material, new, uh, new minis and uh, new things uh, as the, the, the campaign progresses. It, it was the perfect tool for such a huge game. I first picked the, the team we had on Conan, uh, especially the sculptors. Uh, the sculptors are very talented. They are mostly from Rackham. Uh, I, knew, I knew them through Ravage and uh, the, the team on Monolith knew them because uh, they, they were friends. And so we, we first got them. Then we, uh, so uh, names include Stéphane Simon, a uh, very, very good uh, sculptor. Uh, Yannick Enbo, uh, we have uh, Arnaud Boudoiron. Uh, Aragon Marx, um, all those, uh, Stéphane Nguyen, all those are from uh, Rackham. Uh, and then um, we had Victor Dragozani, uh, who was on Conan, who's American. Uh, uh, 
we, we also uh, introduced new sculptors who do not have the, the same experience, but who gained a lot of experience uh, through that. For instance, uh, Irek, uh, who's a, a Polish sculptor. We introduced some new uh, sculptors such as Gauthier Giroux, uh, Martin Lavat. Uh, I mean, we have over 12 uh, different sculptors on the, for, for, for this project and uh, they've all been working uh, together and so we have a, a unity here again. As far as artists are concerned, we had something back from the first game and we added a new team. So Steph Kopinski was the, uh, the, the one involved in the, in the core box mostly and a few add-ons also and a few stretch goals, sorry. Uh, we, we had some uh, French artists as well because we know them. For instance, uh, Stéphane Gantiez who worked on uh, claustrophobia. We have Pascal Kido who worked on uh, many of the Space Cowboys uh, games. And we found uh, a great star, I think, who will become a star who is a Spanish guy called uh, Guilhem Pongilupi. Uh, he's extremely talented and he He's drawn a lot of things for video games and uh, he's, he, he has a very powerful uh, drawing and very sharp uh, style. Uh, he drew all the covers of the expansions and he, he did many, many concepts as well. Sometimes you will find someone who contacts you who's very, very excited about the project and uh, that hasn't worked in uh, the game before, such as David Desmarais. David Desmarais is an artist that is specialized in uh, book covers, uh, science fiction or fantasy covers, and he was very excited and uh, he had to do a test piece and uh, it was very convincing. So even though he was not known in the industry, we, we added him to the team. And uh, so we were open to anyone coming, but they, the only key point was they needed uh, to have a big talent. My favorite god used to be Zeus. Uh, because first of all, I loved the art and, uh, that uh, Steph uh, did. Uh, and also it's a very powerful, iconic and balanced god. And he has uh, the strongest uh, range attack. Uh, so this was the one I would always choose when I got the opportunity because uh, you cannot always play the god you want in the game because it starts with a draft. But when I had the chance, I would always pick him. But after I played some, some games, a couple of games, uh, I got really interested in Athena and she's become my favorite now. Uh, Athena at first seems not a little weaker uh, than the, uh, the other gods, but when you get to play her properly, she can be so, so uh, interesting. Uh, she can coordinate uh, your army, she, she plays fast, so uh, it's very rewarding to play with her. Your, your deck is really fast, uh, and so she's become my favorite.